What's up, guys? BD Wiz here. What do you say we try another palm size mini amp for the Chinese mini amp invasion part two? All right, so this was probably the most in demand amplifier to be tested for the mini amps, the TDA 7498E, most likely because it was the most powerful. And you can see it's got this nice heat sink. And the chip is actually made by ST. This is not a Texas Instruments chip. This is ST Global Semiconductor. You can see they're a huge company. Make tons of chips. Uh, really big company. Just wanted to show you guys that. You can pause if you want to see more about it. But here's the specs of the chip itself. 160 plus 160. 10% THD. 4 ohms. 36 volts. And here is broken down to 1% THD. We're looking for 125 watts per channel, which is a lot for an amplifier of this size. The inputs for the amplifier are RCAs. And there's also a three pin header. So you can add an additional 3.5 uh, millimeter or other input. There are dip switches for the gain adjustments ranging from 29.6 dB up to 35.6 dB. You can see the amplifier here. On the front, there is one single potentiometer for the volume. There are six caps per side. There are 470 microfarad, 50 volts. Notice the one there is missing its hat. <laughs> Must have blown off at the factory or something. Uh, these are generic caps, as you would expect on an amplifier this cheap. On the back, there are screw terminals. The left and right side have the speaker outputs, and the center is for the positive and negative connection from power. And here's the bottom of the amplifier, and it tells you if you want to bridge this, you actually connect J1, J2, J3, and J4. I'll show you that here on the board. We did not do any bridging for the test here. It was stereo test. Now, for the test, I use this 1,200-watt booster that took the input from two 12-volt lead-acid batteries and boosted it up to 36 volts. I'm going to do a separate video on this booster itself because these are really cool. It's a really cool way to boost up the voltage that you need to run an amplifier like this. I use the voltage adjustment potentiometer on the booster here. You can see I'm ramping up the voltage, but I got to around 33 volts and it just kind of stopped. I was like, what's going on here? So I turn it back, turn it forward, couldn't figure out what's going on. Yeah. You big dummy. Big dummy. <laughs> The voltmeter on the right was a 30 volt voltmeter. I needed a higher voltage voltmeter, you big dummy. All right, before we do the dyno test, we're gonna do some sound test. You can see we did all the tests here at 36 volts to get the maximum power out of this amplifier. So first up, we're gonna try this track by Kevin McLeod. This is called Military Electronic. Check it out. <laughs> All right, the part most of you guys want to see, the amp dyno test here of the TDA 7498E. All the tests were done at 36 volts. You'll notice that here for all the ones you're going to see. First up, we're going to start off with an 8 ohm stereo test, 1 kilohertz at 36 volts. What do we get, my friends? Ah, 68 watts per channel. So it's not rated at 8 ohms, it's actually rated at 4 ohms to get 125 by 2. So what do you think we're going to try next? That's right, 4 ohms. Rated 125 by 2, 1% THD. 
1,000 hertz. What do we get? Uh, oh, not quite. 111 watts per channel. A little shy, but honestly, a lot closer than I thought it would get. It also heated up the amplifier some. You can see here the fan is running on that nice copper-looking heat sink. So we decided we haven't given enough torture. Let's go ahead and do some dynamic burst. First up, we'll do the 4-ohm dynamic burst. 119 watts per channel. Pretty good. Not quite that 125 that it's rated, but again, much closer than we expect from a lot of these Chinese knockoff mini amps, especially one that's less than 20 bucks. So look at this, 2.67 ohms, almost 150. Ooh, we got it, 151 watts per channel. Not too bad. So now that we have the amp nice and warmed up, you can see the heat sink fan is going, keeping it nice and cool. We got out the old infrared thermometer here to check out the temperature. We couldn't get it right on the chip because of this huge heat sink, but I got it as close as I could around the heat sink. And you can see it's nice and cool. We didn't get much over 111. I think 113 was the maximum that we got. <laughs> All right, now we'll check out the results for the TDA7498E amplifier. We actually tested at both 24 and 36 volts. Here is a 24 volt results. You can pause the video now if you like to see these. We tested at one kilohertz and 40 hertz, basically around 34 watts per channel at eight ohms and around 55 watts per channel at four ohms and not much difference at 40 hertz. Again, pause the video if you'd like to see that. We were not able to obtain good uh, current pull measurements because of our tools. Our tools are more designed for the higher power amplifiers, not these low power amps. And here is the 36 volt test. You saw some of these in the video. You can pause it again if you'd like to see the specifics of the one kilohertz and 40 hertz test. But again, 68 watts per channel at eight ohms and around 110 watts per channel at four ohms. So pretty good, pretty admirable performer here on the amp dyno. Again, for $18, <laughs> it's really hard to believe what you're getting. Um, quite a bit of power. So pretty impressive in that aspect. All right, so next up, I'll summarize it with my not-so-goods. First up, weak bass. I hooked it up to my 12-inch Infinity subwoofer, and yeah, it did not provide a lot of very good bass. Um, it doesn't have Bluetooth, but again, for $18, you don't really expect it. It requires between 32 and 36 volts, which requires you to get one of these voltage boosters, so that's an additional cost. But again, it's so cheap, you know, who cares? It doesn't have any tone controls, no bass and treble tone controls, so just so you know, just a volume knob. On to the good stuff. It's inexpensive. It's the time I purchased it, it was around $18. Check the video description for links to this and also the voltage booster. It has the adjustable input sensitivity, which is nice depending on you know what input you're using. If you're using a phone or an iPod or something with a low voltage output, you can switch the gain adjustment to a higher dB. That's very nice to have that. It has a large heat sink and fan. It does a really good job of keeping this amp nice and cool. Uh, as you can see in the earlier in the video, I didn't get it much above 113 degrees. Uh, so very nice, keeps it nice and cool. It has RCA plus the little pin header here. So you can add an additional input as well. They're paralleled together, so you can only use one or the other, but it's still nice to have that. High power output. You saw it, the dyno test, over 150 watts per channel. So very impressive for the price. Thanks as always for watching my videos and supporting me by sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. This is Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com, testing Chinese mini amps. Until next time. I'm out of here. All right, guys, for those of you who stuck around, this is one of the craziest songs I've ever heard. It's in the YouTube audio library. It's called Jaw Harp You Can Dance To. Enjoy.